hello my fearless ones i am trying to record this video for the fifth time uh, i started the video i had a phone call come in and um the, the title of the video is going to be arise ibo interviews um so i just deleted that video i started i'm going to start all over because i don't know how to like copy and paste videos together if i have done it in the past it probably was some software that i no longer have access to so um i'm going to try to make this video really quick and it's going to be two parts because i'm going to record two videos today but i wanted to do this one while i was fresh on my mind um yesterday I got a phone call from a CSP. She's not signed under me and um, that was fine. She 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 texts me and says she has some concerns and questions. And in the next two weeks, I have some available time to just try to talk to anyone that have questions or need some assistance, whether you're signed under someone or not. But here's the thing, you guys, and I'm not trying to be judgmental or pushy or sound like a know-it-all. If you have to call someone else to get information and you have an IBO, that's a red flag right there. Because your IBO should be available to answer whatever questions, you questions and concerns that you might have concerning a client, concerning a rise policies and procedures, and concerning whatever is required for you to directly with the IBO. If your IBO is not available to answer just general arise questions, then you're really with the wrong company. And like I said, I'm not trying to be pushy or know-it-all or judgmental. If I do business with you and I'm paying you a fee to be my IBO and I have to call another IBO with a company, then what do I have you for? Why are you my IBO? Why am I paying you X amount of dollars, whatever the agreement is? It could be a $40 flat fee. It could be $20. It could be nothing. If if they're not, if they claim that they're not getting anything out of you and they're your IBO and that's the reason why they're not answering your questions, then you need to find the IBO that you're actually paying. They can answer questions for you. I mean, I don't quite understand the whole just or I will get people that contact me to say that I want to be an IBO, but I've never serviced for a rise. Okay, so, and again, please don't take this personal. It's just logic, you guys. Let's use business common sense. You want to become an IBO. And you want people to work under you, but you're not knowledgeable of the things that the people that work under you do because you've never done what they're doing, but you want them to sign under you. It don't make sense. I'm not going to sign under someone that has never did customer service work for a company that they're an IBO for. I'm not going to, I'm personally not going to do it. And another thing be careful about who you sign with. Instead of you calling your an IBO saying, "I really want to sign under you," you ought to. You need to do interview processes. I feel like you need to find at least three. Just like I, I, I had some, I need some work done to my house. We just really had like a natural. I would call it it was a natural disaster, or, or um. I had a huge tree in my yard, which should have been cut anyway. <laughs> and it fell halfway like the tree limbs hit my roof and um, didn't, didn't take out the whole roof, but it just kind of snagged the back, back of my house. And instead of trying to rip repair the roof i'm going to replace it and instead of going with the first company that approached me that said hey we can do the work because the day that it happened contractors started circling our community like leaving their business cards and 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 soliciting they knocking on the door and everything else i took i, I took everybody's card i did it with respect i shook hands and I made my own decision as to who I wanted to do the work for my home. I just didn't take the first person that approached me. I, I built a rapport. I have to know that I can trust. This is my home. I put money into this home. When I pay my mortgage, 
then I'm putting money into this home as equity. It's, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. There's been times that I've ne not paid mortgage, you know, to, to, to assist with my business. So this is my home. And I want to make sure whoever I allow to do the work is trustworthy and is going to give me a reasonable price. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yesterday in my front yard, the, the, the company that I chose brought their brought their little daughter, me and her, the little girl, little, little bit, me and her chit chatted and, 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 you know, me, I felt good vibrations with this family. They gave me a decent quote. They were the best company and I felt comfortable with them. I signed the contract in my front yard. And they said, whenever the weather clear up, we're going to get started on your home. And they also had, when I was asking them about other little stuff around my house, like the stump removal from the tree, they were like, well, we know someone that can remove the stump and, and we know someone that can do this type of work, like inside the home remodeling and they, they can give you a reasonable price. We're just a family of people that, you know, and on their advertisement, it says trustworthy, honest and affordable. So what I am saying is don't take the first, excuse me, don't take the first company because their videos are bedazzled or they have a bedazzled website and, you know, they're feeding you all this fluff. But the thing is, are you in the trenches? Do you know about this company? How much of my money you going to keep? Understand this, you guys, whoever you sign under, they have control of your contract and your check. So you can't see any of that. You have to trust that who you choose is going to pay you what you actually earn. Then Arise has it set up like this. When you go in as a CSP to see the opportunities, Whatever the opportunities are available at that time, you can't even see how much they pay now. I didn't know that. I did not know that until CSPs brought it to my attention. They were like, we can't see the pay. We can see the opportunity and what's required of us, but we can't see how much they pay. Why? Because your I, you might actually be making $15 an hour from a company, but your IBO may pay you 10 What gives you the right as an IBO to take off $5 of, uh, every hour on my pay? If I work 80 hours, you're getting $400 of my pay because you're taking, you're, you're trimming off $5 of my overall hourly pay. So be leery and be careful. Shop around, get a, build a rapport, make sure you feel comfortable. Have a discerning spirit about when you make decisions, you guys. Don't make decisions on what things look like. We as humans want to make decisions on what people look like. Well, they look like they business people because their videos look like this and their website look like that. Yes, but what type of people are you dealing with? You're dealing with your money. And when you deal with people money, you deal with their emotions. Because money and emotions are tied together. I don't care what people say. Well, money ain't, you know, this and money ain't that. Yes, but when somebody is robbing you of your money, you get real emotional real quick. So this is an unprofessional, raw, uncut, personal slash business video. I do all my videos like that. I don't, I'm recording this video on an older Samsung phone. I don't have an iPhone. My daughter just purchased a new iPhone 10 or X or whatever that stuff is. My videos is not that it's it's not that clear because I actually need to upgrade my phone. But I'm I'm not into the new. I'm into treating people right. I'm into what can I offer to this universe? What do I have to offer to the universe to contribute to the good of mankind? That's what I'm for. I'm not for what can I get to, to floss and what's new and shiny things and, and, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that shiny thing, like beat people out their money. Okay, so I spoke with the young lady yesterday, back to the story. And she said, my IBO wanted me to send him $600 for some equipment for a company. And I don't think I can say the name because unless you signed under a rise, then you can have access to all the companies that they actually service for. So, and I said, which company are you referring to? And she said this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I've never known that you need $600 worth of equipment to service for this company. And even if you do, 
again let's use business economical common sense this is not ju being judgmental i'm not acting like a know-it-all if you fresh into this thing why would you start with the company that you're going to need six hundred dollars worth of equipment for anyway so why don't you sign up for a company all you need is a working computer if, if it passed their tech test, their scan, and you know you have a home phone, you have a headset, and your computer is up to date, and will 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 you can service for this? It 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 passed the PC scan. That's what it's called, PC scan. Why not go with that company? The whole point of this is to earn some revenue. I know it takes money to make money, but it don't take $600. Honey, with $600, you can go down to your local business license department and get your own business license and become your own IBO. Not to sign up a bunch of people, but to be your own IBO so you can control your own checks and your own contract. I hear a lot of people say, I want to be an IBO. Why? Is it to, to try to sign up a bunch of people or is it to control your own monies? What is your why? Why are you doing this? You know, come on now. I get I get a lot get a lot of people contacting me and I'm just going to keep it raw and uncut. Are you do you say I want to be an IBO so I could control my own money, but if you just want to sign up a bunch of people and control their money then I think your why is a little shady. And then you've never serviced yet. Get, learn out, learn, find out how to do this job first before you try to become an IBO. Or, excuse me, before you try to sign people under you. But I think everybody needs to be their own, own IBO so you can control your money. But it's going to cost you. I don't know what your state requirements are. So don't take my video and say, well, I'm going down to the local business license office to get started. I do not know. And then here's another thing I just found out. I found this out due, due to my own business. Every company business is not in good standing. Because I found out as I was opening up another company, a partnership. Remember, I, you guys, I told I told you about that. I was changing it over to a LLLP, which is a limited liability, limited partnership. That means that both of us are protected, our personal assets. So if anybody decide they want to come after the company, the brand, our assets are protected. And as I was changing over, the woman was telling me, she said, well, you owe franchise taxes from your other business, your LLC. And it's actually not in good standing. So if that if the company that you're dealing with is not paying their yearly franchise and fees and taxes and stuff, that company may not even be in good standing. And this is a company that I was actually working with with the rise. I had to catch up my franchise and taxes to get in good standing. So you don't know what type of company you're dealing with. Is it legit? Are they up to date on their taxes? Is their business license up to date? It takes a lot. That's the reason why I charge 10% is because I have taxes and stuff I have to pay in order for you to service through me with I rise. It get, it get when it comes to business, it get a little complicated and you have to be knowledgeable. You have to go and do your own research. You have to know, you have to be business savvy. Everyone has a local small business center in their community. It may, I don't know where you live. Mine happened to be about 15 to 20 miles away from where I live. It actually is at my youngest daughter, the middle child, the, the youngest twin. They have the small business administration at her college. And the, the interns and work studies help local entrepreneurs write up business plans and stuff. So Whenever I have a question, I might call over and, and, and one of those youngsters will do the research and, and answer a question when I first started. When I was writing out my business plan and, and, and building a business from scratch, I, I went to them first. I actually had them send me an example, uh, uh, like an example of a business license that someone had completed but he, here's what i can say about business licenses it's never completed it's always it's a live active thing because you always changing your business 
your business plan, excuse me. So I had them send me a copy of someone's business plan. But from what I understand now, uh, being in business for so many years since 2012, when I, I found this information out when I went to open a new business, that this uh, light year been open since 2012. So that's what, seven years? Um, a business license, I mean, a business plan, excuse me, is always active. You're always changing it. And um, so it's never complete because, you know, you're always trying to add new products and services to your business. But it, it, you guys, all, all I can tell you, here's what I can say. If you know you don't have the money to start your own business and you want to become a CSP and you want a service for a rise, you really need to find a trustworthy company that is not asking you to send money, not asking you to finance computers and, and buying software. Now they're trying to sell you headsets and th different things like that. An IBO is more like a mentor and a and, and, and a mediator between you arise and your client. The, your your IBO is that per that in between person between the client and arise. So if you have any questions or concerns about arise policies and procedures your ibo if you have any questions and concerns about your qapf or are the clients rules and regulations your your contract different things like that that would be your ibo my nose is itching <clears throat> that would be your ibo it's not for them to sell you a bunch of equipment that you need to service with all of that information is on the rise uh faq frequently asked questions yeah FAQ. <laughs> i had to think about that that information is on the faq go go do read up on this company find out as much information as you can and um <clears throat> i wish everybody the best but the person that contacted me yesterday that said her ibo wanted her to uh, give him send him six hundred dollars for equipment i wouldn't do that don't service that client if you're gonna need six hundred dollars worth of equipment don't service that client because i didn't even pay six hundred dollars for my desktop that i work on right now collectively between my laptop and my desktop i may have paid over you know close to a thousand dollars but i have a newer model laptop that i just purchased five years ago i mean five months ago five months ago but my my desktop i, I purchased that thing about four years ago and it's still running strong and it'll pass any pc test on arise so just be careful who you do business with just don't sign up with anybody really you know, get, narrow your narrow them narrow your IBOs down. Do a quick fifteen minute interview with them, and if you like their vibes, that their their energy that they're sending you over the phone, and they're not talking slick to you, then sign with them. But if you feel like they're they're wanting you to spend more money than you anticipated and what you already did research, then don't deal with them. Don't deal with them because again, I'm going to say this, and I can't stress enough. Once your IBO sign your contract, they own that contract. If you leave that IBO, you're leaving your contract behind. You can't take it with you. You can't transfer it to a different company. You All you can do is stay with that IBO until that contract end, and then you can switch over to a different IBO and sign. go to take another class. And sign a new contract. But that particular contract, it stays with them. Even when it's time to renew, it's going to stay with that company. And you, you, you just lost. You may have a good rapport with your client, but then your IBO may not be paying you right. And you want to leave your IBO. And if you leave your IBO, you got to leave your contract. And now you got to take that client class all over again just to get back with that client. And here's the deal. What if that client don't have any opening classes? What if they already have enough people so they're not offering any classes? That means you're gonna lose your your good client, your good rapport with your client, and then you don't you don't your 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 IBO is not trustworthy. I hope that makes sense. Rewind this video and listen to it again if you don't if you didn't understand what I just said. If you have a good rapport with your client but you don't have a good rapport with your IBO and you want to leave your IBO, you can't take the contract with you. Your IBO owns that contract. It has 
their name and their business on that contract. Not you. Not you. You're just like a worker. It's like working for a temporary agency, y'all. And y'all said, y'all. <laughs> It's like going to any temporary agency. You work through the temporary agency for XYZ company. When, when the XYZ company have an issue with you, they always contact the temporary service. The temporary service is the company that signed your contract with XYZ company. And if for some reason it don't work out with XYZ company, then that contract get terminated with the temporary agency. You don't have nothing to do with it. You just go to work. And they pay the temporary agency pay you what they want you to have. So let's just say XYZ company pay $20 an hour. Temporary agency may only pay you 12 of that. They keep the other eight. You don't know that. You don't know the agreement between XYZ company and the temporary agency. Because you can't see the contract. I always try to send people contracts too after I sign them so they can have a copy of it. All you have to do is just email me, ask me, Latasha, can you send me a copy of my contract? I'll send it. So you will know exactly how much you're getting paid. And know that if you work 60 hours and you get paid $10 an hour, your check going to be around $600. After a rise, take their $19.75 hour. $19.75 and then you going to deduct my fee after their fee and that's how much your check is going to be so it's not hard my, 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 my numbers are not as complicated as you think they are but when you don't know what these people taking out your check it's kind of hard because you don't have a copy of your contract if you already signed with someone you can't leave them ask for a copy of your contract it should take them five minutes to, to download it to their computer send it to you as a PDF attachment you should be able to open it up from any Google email and see your whole contract if they stalling and telling you it's difficult to do they're full of it they're scammers if a person tell you that it's going to take a long time for you to drop for from them to drop you as a csp they're scamming it that takes five minutes to do too you log into the uh, uh arise portal as an ibo and if a person want to be released from you you just click release it's not complicated they don't have to sign no paperwork no contracts no none of that so if, if a person is not willing to give, be open with you and give you the information that you need, don't deal with them. I'm about to go, you guys. It's 22 minutes and I have to go and make a run and go home, go to the gym. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to do another video later, uh, hopefully, and it has nothing to do with work at home. Um, it's a, a personal development and growth video. Till next time, you guys, God bless, stay fearless, and I wish everyone the best, well, prosperous, good health, all of that good stuff. You know what I mean. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.